What's up guys, it's Weston Smith and today we are testing out the newest baits on the market, man. The brand new cycle bait, sponsored by Catchco. Let's get it. Oh, there we go. Good fish, guys. Good fish. Oh my gosh. That's fish number three. Got him. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> no way, man. We have got another. <laughs> oh my. As soon as it hit the surface, watch this. Hit the surface. Yes, yeah, like fast on these things. There we go. That's the biggest one so far. This one might be a little bigger. Oh my gosh. Okay, you know what? I liked I liked this lake after the first cast. Rigged and ready y'all and it's windy out which I think is the right conditions for this thing. Let's see what it's made of. Alright y'all we've made our first few casts but I want to show you guys a way to spice things up a bit with this. This is going to be killer right here. We're going to go ahead and add a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer on the back. Just a small swim bait trailer. Add in a little extra kick. Wiggle that skirt down a little bit. Now I can see how I need to size up my plastic, where I need to puncture through right about here on the back of that bait so that we're fitting properly. Let's go ahead and feed it up onto the hook until about that point. And then I will exit the body and feed it up onto the hook. There we go, guys. Look at that. Now that looks just like a fish that's swimming in here with a little extra flash to get their attention. And this thing is absolutely sick. It really is wiggling back and forth. It's almost like a spinner bait, but with more movement. I think this thing is going to absolutely excel in stained water. And when it's windy, just bringing fish in from far away. So without further ado, let's get a couple more casts in here. Here we go with the perfect spot to kick things off. Check this out, some current. That is what we're talking about. Rip it through here, man. This could be good. Just switched up the body of water we're fishing. Oh, there we go. Good fish, guys. Good fish. It's taking drag. Oh my gosh. You know why we didn't get that fish? Because the drag is loose. That was easily a three pounder. I think that thing might have been four plus right there. That was a big fish, guys. Why did I not check my drag ahead of time? Oh my gosh. We got to keep covering some more water. Yes, sir. Well, that's a bummer. Got a big bite and then we get kicked out. On to the next one, I suppose. Well, we kind of got kicked out before ever really getting started, so that's a bummer, but we just pulled up to spot number two after a short stroll down the street. This is a place we've never hit, by the way, so this could be pretty interesting. There's no logged catches on fish brain, which has me a little worried because normally these urban spots are like loaded with people who let you know if they catch a fish. Not going to let that discourage us. We're going to give this about 20, 30 minutes, see if we can get one, and then we're going to move down the street if not. But let me tell you about the cycle bait real quick. It is a new patented wire bait with an erratic action like nothing you've seen before. You guys noticed it was kind of doing that wiggle left to right when we were fishing this thing. Absolutely sick. Unlike a spinner bait, the interlocking rings cause the blade to switch directions through the retrieve, which I noticed quite a bit. It literally feels like you're almost using a chatter bait. I mean, it's got more wiggle on the rod tip. It, it's fantastic, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and try and catch a fish at pond number three. Let's see what this thing is all about. We have just gotten snagged. I don't think we're getting this back, unfortunately. If you learn anything from me this video is so that you don't want to cast next to those fountains, go ahead and drop a like for that bait and subscribe for more tips like this. 
in future videos. Let's go tie on the shad and hit another body of water. Well, y'all, no time to dwell on the losses. Let's go ahead and rig up this second one right here and redeem ourselves at the next spot. By the way, this is the only other one we have. So I'm going to try to be more careful with it. And we're going to hit some spots I think are going to really showcase this bait in its best light. We might try and find some more stained water. That way this color really shines. But if we hit some clear stuff, I think we'll find a hungry bass. This is proving to be much more challenging than I thought. Normally on a day like this, the moving bite is just hot. Surely they don't want something like a Texas rig today. That's not going to help me out. All right, guys, next spot. It's do or die. We've got it rigged up. All right, we have found ourselves at the Frito-Lay headquarters. I think this is pond number four. Honestly, I'm not even sure. I don't think I've hit this spot in a long time, though. I can quite promise that. Don't quote me on this, but I suspect they don't want you fishing this place. I don't know. We'll find out pretty quick, I'm sure. It says 24-hour video surveillance, so... If we don't get kicked out in the first three to five minutes, I think that just means green light for the go ahead. Okay, I'm not seeing any signs approaching the water. This is nice too, a little bit more stain. This is what we want. Let's give this thing a cast. I almost feel like, oh, I have a fish, first cast. I was like, I almost feel like I have a fish on here, but it was so light, I didn't even want to say anything. No way. Okay, so first ever catch on the cycle bait? No way. And yes, it's a little guy, but if they're munching in here, it might just be game time. Oh my gosh, can you believe that? Why did I not start here? This is actually like very clear too, like extremely clear. It looks very stained on first impression, but if I had my polarized shades, I bet you I could just be seeing the fish. It's like two feet right here, completely visible down to the bottom. Let's get, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm pumped. I wonder if that was just pure reaction strike right when it hit the water. What if I can like get up under here? That's gotta be worth something. Something's gotta come and chase it. No? Okay. So today we figured out security loves this bait. The fountains love this bait. The fish love this bait. So I'm assuming y'all probably love it. Check out the link in the description, man, if you guys wanna pick these things up. I'm not even sure if they're available for like the next week or two. But I would say just go ahead and give it a shot because the thing is if they are available at this very point in time and you haven't selected your favorite color, it might sell out pretty quick because anything that resembles a spinner bait this is a lot of people's staple confidence bait and the fact that this thing has so much more kick and feels you get more feel out of the rod tip with this thing it's kind of more fun to fish to be honest like the spinner baits are very subtle you maybe feel a little tick through that rod tip right well this is like it's got that thump i'm i'm digging it dudes so theoretically it should have made my bite much easier to detect but honestly i really thought that that bass was just me i just thought i went through some grass and i had some weight on there <laughs> so that was my bad but look at this thing in the water can you guys see that thing look at it nuts dude unlike any bait i've ever thrown i cannot wait to catch a big on this thing i totally missed my chance already but i missed that big one earlier that was not cool yep there we go this one might be a little bigger no, he just feels a little heavier at first. Nice. Number two. Number two. Just kind of fanned it out and cast it to another area out here. Let's go, man. We're not getting the size yet, but we've got some numbers now. I bet you that big one is right around the corner. Well, I keep getting him at the end of the cast, too. I've got another one. Oh, my gosh. Back to back. Wait, is he off? I think he's off. I had another one smash it, dude. Wow. I keep getting him out there deep. Totally on, like, the last spot. Oh, my gosh. I just got smashed. Literally right here, something just hit it, guys. I was going to say, I kept getting hit by the bank, and it almost seems more typical when I'm pond fishing, getting those uh, spinnerbait hits kind of closer to you. But I was getting these last few way out there. The bite has amped up at spot number whatever this is. Oh, God. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's got it that time. He came back for it. That's fish number three. And they're getting bigger. You know what's funny? I'm throwing this chartreuse bait. And look at this bass. It's like super yellow. What the heck? He probably thinks he's eating a baby bass right now. This might be the perfect color. I was thinking to myself, it's a bummer I don't have that bluegill color anymore. Because I feel like they'd smash it here. It's probably what they're feeding on is bluegill. But then I'm pulling out these yellow-bellied bass. And they probably think they're just eating whatever's swimming around in here. So that is not bad at all. And that fish hit it and kind of like missed it. He just kind of swiped at it. And then he came back for it. So that was cool. And I've got another one doing the same thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, what was that? Oh, 
I've got something. I mean, I think he's got it. I literally have the smallest fish ever. Oh my gosh. Okay, you know what? I liked, I liked this lake after the first cast, but I'm starting to think I need to go somewhere else now after getting four dinksters in a row. You, you know what's funny though? I just came back from Florida and you catch all these little guys in the ocean and then all of a sudden you get like a 50 pounder. It's not much different than the ponds. If you find a lot of ding, if you find a lot of these smaller bass, I mean, the big ones are harder to come by for sure. So you could get lucky. And I have no doubts there's at least a five pounder in here. I mean, the thing is, if there is a, a food, if there's a good food source in here, which I'm betting there is, these fish are getting big. Here comes the bass following it up. Oh my God, we could get this guy. He's literally right here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I have no doubts there's some decent bass in here. So before I leave, I'm not gonna leave some feeding fish to go try and see if they'll bite somewhere else. Let me see if I can get a big one here first. This is what happens when you run around at the urban spots though, you know? You'll get lucky with some size, but it's always fun just catching some fish. Oh, 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 I got one on it. One just swiped at it again. These fish are funny, they're not attacking it. Like, they're not inhaling it, they're just mad at it. Oh, golly. Right off the bat, two hits. I mean, that was as soon as it hit the surface. Watch this. Hit the surface. Okay, no bites yet. There you go. Oh my gosh. You gotta swing fast on these things. There we go. That's the biggest one so far. That's probably two pounds. There we go. There we go. Now we're getting a respectable fish out of here. That's what we came for. That's what we came for. Come on now. Yes. Give me some more of that. That's what we are talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, top of the mouth hook set. You know, he's a little shy of two pounds, I bet, but that's, we're getting to where we want to be right there. With this guy, that's a major plus. Let's get a quick picture for the gram. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. Sick catch. Now we're getting where we want. See you, bud, darting off. Let's see what's up over here. Oh yeah, this might be the Mecca. Oh wow, look at all those bluegill. One parallel to this grass edge real quick. This could be good. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, well, little guy. There we go. Oh no. Ah, oh, we had a fish on there for just a second. All the way on the other bank. All right, let's go find some new water. All right, we are just roaming the city of Plano today. We have found ourselves at a new spot. I think over yonder is the water. I haven't fished here in a long time either. In fact, I don't think I've ever caught any fish here. Been here one time and casted a line for like 15 minutes. And I'm pretty sure there's some big fish in this spot. People don't really fish this, I don't think. It's Saturday, so I think these businesses are closed. Let's go ahead and see what we can get into over here. Yeah, this spot's looking pretty juice, boys. I think we better up the ante. I think we need to add a little trailer to this. Let's break out the package of Saucy Swimmers. 3.3 inches, perfect size for this. You guys are gonna be able to grab all the stuff at Carl's Bait and Tackle, by the way. That's where we get all of our stuff. Save up to 30% at Carl's Bait and Tackle, but right now they actually have their biggest sale of the year going on. You might be able to save more than that, man. They've got cheap deals going. Feed this sauce right up on here. Oh yeah, that is just what we want. Whoo, okay. Where them fives at? There we go, there we go. All right, that took two seconds. We'll take it. All right, guys. That's sick. Add the saucy swimmer for a little extra kick. Get a bass right off the bat. We hit that grass line right there, windblown bank. It's all adding up. I don't even know how many fish I'm at in this video at this point. It's literally only been like a few hours. I mean, as far as it's been a few hours, but the thing is I haven't spent as much time at the ponds as I have driving around. So really the fishing time has probably been like 45 minutes and this thing is raking them up. It has been a fantastic time on this right here. Let's see if we can't just keep adding them up. Oh wow, I thought that was a giant. I really don't want to lose two of these. That would be both of them, the only ones I have. There we go. Whoo! After something like that, guys, always check your line because you never know if you rubbed up against that log the wrong way. And if it's frayed, you want to retie. Otherwise, you will definitely lose this bait on the next fish. They'll start thrashing and that line's just going to snap because the integrity is already jeopardized. So it's feeling pretty good. No guarantees in life, but I think we're all right. What do we have here? Okay, this is the one. This is the one, guys. This is it. This is it. Oh my. Oh my. 
I did not even know if that was a fish. Oh no, 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 don't do it. This is the good one. Oh my gosh, guys, no way, no way. Stop, stop. Oh, wow. That is what we are talking about. Oh, that's a fat three plus right there on the brand new cycle bait. No way, three plus on the new ish. No way, fatty. Golly, guys, that is what we're after. Buckets on the new cycle bait. No way. I thought I was stuck on another log right there. That thing was dead weight for those first few seconds. I did not know if I had a fish. That was nuts. Okay, let me find an area where it's a little bit deeper. Just making sure we take care of these big fish. City spots, man. Urban stuff on the weekends when the businesses are closed. That's how you do it. All right, we're gonna have to give them a little toss. There we go, kicking. Yes, man. My scale has been acting up, but I'm sure that was three and a half pounds right there. Just a plump, solid fish. Exactly what you're looking for when you hit these city ponds, man. What a blast. And just imagine that first one of the day that came off when the drag was slipping. Literally, we could have had two fish of that caliber on this bait the first time we ever break it out. That's so sick. And I don't want you guys to think you have to be spot on with color because I doubt there's any fish in this pond that look exactly like this and they're still munching. But I would highly recommend if you guys are throwing in ponds, grab the bluegill. If you're throwing in lakes, grab something like the shad right here. It just depends on what's swimming around in your area. I think those natural greenish or bluish colors for the clear water, kind of like that bluegill, think this for more stained water obviously it's working in the clearer stuff today we cannot be more pumped on this new bait guys if y'all want to get one of these man now's the time so sick even the detail on the blade with those two fish you got the weight on the bottom so you can tell what size you're throwing this is clearly the half ounce tack sharp hook freaking monster of a bait let's get another big one, man oh i bet you there's some hogs in here makes all the pond hopping and getting kicked out completely worth it in case you guys were curious too i'm throwing this on fluorocarbon line fluorocarbon is much more invisible than like let's say mono or braid both braid and mono are going to float naturally this uh, fluorocarbon line is a little bit more dense so it actually sinks which allows this bait to get down a little bit lower in the column and the fact that they can't see it is fantastic this is 15 pound on here which is a great all-around fluorocarbon size if you guys are unfamiliar with what line to get you want something that's not just going to snap off left and right but also that is good for even more clear water applications 15 is fantastic now in some areas, the fish are much more line shy and you have to size down. I wouldn't go any lower than 10 pound on a bait like this because the thing is, with a single hook like this, you are gonna wanna set that hook pretty good on these bites. And so that is gonna be an issue if you've got light line, you could jeopardize snapping off if you've got a big heavy fish on or if your knot isn't the best. I strongly recommend a Palomar knot. I have a video on how to tie it and it is my favorite. I just went with a simple uni knot today just to be quick. I do think the strength and ease of uh, learning that Palomar knot is like the best there is and if you were gonna really beef things up because maybe you're fishing some stained water or you expect some giants and you're fishing a bigger fish area I would go up to maybe 17 or 20 pound at the max you want to still be able to get casting distance and you'll get more distance out of this on lighter line and so that is what we've got going on today just a steady smooth retrieve on this thing you can speed it up a little bit if you want a little bit more erratic motion just see what the fish react to and kind of keep it at that pace what the fish want varies day to day and you going a little bit slower is going to get it a little bit lower and if you keep it up high and, and you can also reel it fast and keep it up high in the column which is good if you've got a bunch of stuff you're getting snagged on and you'll still get bites so there's not really an incorrect way to work this thing. You want to keep your rod at about a 45. That way when those fish bite, it kind of automatically loads up a little bit right before you hammer them. And I got lucky on that last one. He bit it so hard, I just kind of cranked down. I didn't even really smash the hook set. I just kind of loaded up, tightened it, and I ended up bringing that one home. Thank you, 10,000 fish, for a sick new product. Dang, we just got hammered. That one smoked the tail right off the saucy swimmer. There we go. There we go. Got another. Oh, not quite as big as the last, but we'll take it. I'm digging the grass in here, man. On this side of the pond, it's much more close to the surface, and I can just kind of skirt this thing right along the top of it. These bass are ambushing them straight out of the grass. This side's looking pretty good. There we go. There we go. We're on. Nice. All right. No way, man. Guys, we have got to be close to 10 fish on the cycle bait. This is just absolutely insane. They are munching it. Luckily, we kept that tight, too, because I don't think that guy was even barely hooked. Oh, my goodness. What a blast. I've covered just about every inch of this bank that I can, I believe, because what's happened over here 
is a little sticky and I can't go any further left because there's like a gate. So I might just walk the bank a little bit further. Yeah, see you later. Have a good one. Bye. Later. Oh gosh, there we go. Another good one. Oh, we just literally walked over to this side of the pond. <laughs> Haven't really casted much. It's been like 15 minutes. I was just chatting it up with an old buddy. And so I gave these fish a break and then come back over here and first cast while well, bam. <laughs> oh my God. We got to be up to 10 fish by now. Got to be at like 10 plus fish on this thing. I mean, this is like, we're setting records out here in the city boys. Oh, that's not good. I didn't want to get a bite right there because they're just gonna take me in the grass. Oh gosh, get him out of there. Okay, I knew there would be a fish right there. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, I just cast it out straight, but the wind took it to the left. And sure enough, this guy hit right before the, the point of all this shrubbery right here. And I figured he was gonna take me in there and I was gonna lose that fish. Luckily, it was a little guy. So we were able to muscle him out of there. Oh, yep, got a good one. Got a good one, new spot. There we go. Yes. Oh my gosh. I didn't want to cast here when I first arrived because I figured if I got a good one, I might break off. Now that we've crushed a handful, I figured why not risk it and see if I could pull one out right here. I thought that was a big one when it first hit, but slightly incorrect. Oh, got him, got him. Nice. <laughs> Raking them up. I mean, this is nuts. I would literally be on just this one bait if I didn't lose the first one. And then also, I think I'm on the second Saucy Swimmer. So, I mean, having a blast with just one bait this whole day. Oh, got him. There we go. That one's running. Oh, my gosh. I think that's three or four right here now. Absolutely absurd. How? <laughs> is there a better bait on the market? That is up for debate at this point. Okay. Okay, that was insane. All right, guys, I imagine you have a good idea of my opinion on the cycle bait at this point. I made it back to the house. If you guys want to grab one of these, you absolutely have got to go to Carl's Bait and Tackle right now. We would love to, again, thank Catchco for sponsoring today's video and hooking us up with this bait to showcase for you guys. With that being said, we have a fire upload coming for you guys tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. Subscribe if you're not already. Turn notifications to all. And uh, I think within like the YouTube app, you can also go into your settings on your phone and you can get it to where your notifications pop up on your phone. So like you'll get an alert, almost like a text message when new videos drop from your favorite creators. I have it turned on. So I see when people like Flair upload, I see when people like the Stradman upload, Peter McKinnon, things of that nature. So if you guys don't have that turned on, sometimes you miss the notifications even though they are set to all. So I'm just hooking you guys with that little tip right here to close things out and the video's over. That's all we got for today. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Peace. <gasps>